All right, next to West Asia, in fact, the country of Saudi Arabia. A recent report has appeared on a publication, The Middle East Eye. It's highlighted how terrorists enjoy hospitality and even television time. Daniele Pagani filed this report. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Abdul Majid Al Zindani might be an unknown face to many of us, but to those fighting within the ranks of Al Qaeda, he most certainly is not. Mr. Zindani is a Yemeni citizen, but not an ordinary one. His name appears on a US list of designated global terrorists. When including his name, the US State Department pointed out that Mr. Zindani had, for many years, been a spiritual leader to none less than Osama bin Laden himself. Mr. Zindani is also an open supporter of the Saudi-led coalition fighting against the Shia Houthi rebels in Yemen. Despite his infamous curriculum, the Yemeni man enjoys a warm hospitality in Saudi Arabia, where he is often welcomed by the kingdom's officials and senior clerics. Yes, this is the same Saudi Arabia which claims to be a crucial United States ally in the fight against global terror. And yes, indeed, the same Saudi Arabia which spearheaded a four-country coalition accusing Qatar of supporting terrorism. But this is not the first time that a dubious person linked to Al-Qaeda is openly enjoying Saudi warmth. According to an investigation by the Yemeni journalist Shuaib al Musawa, which appeared in the publication Middle East Eye, Mr. Naviz al qaizi leader of an anti-Shia rebel group in Yemen and an avowed supporter of the Al-Qaeda, often appears on Saudi-run television channels. This is what the United Nations had to say about Mr. al qaizi Participating in the financing, planning, facilitating, preparing or perpetrating of acts or activities by, in conjunction with, under the name of, on behalf of or in support of Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula. And this by supplying, selling or transferring arms and related material to the terror outfit. AQAP, Al-Qaeda in the Arabic Peninsula, has its headquarters in Yemen and thanks to the sectarian war raging in the country, it's strengthening its presence day by day. The think tank International Crisis Group highlighted how the organization now enjoys access to vast funding and growing support. Designated global terrorists safely living in Saudi Arabia and even appearing regularly on television are one example of the game that the House of Saud is playing in West Asia and in the world. On the one hand, they sign deals with the United States and agree to be their partner in combating terror, but on the other hand, they are home to the largest economic and ideological contributors to several terror outfits currently fighting all over West Asia. The House of Saud does not want to lose US support, but at the same time, they do not want to abandon their mission of spreading their hardline Wahhabi version of Islam around the world. It is a dangerous two-phased game, one that lies in playing with the sacred and the secular and one which is contributing towards the destabilization of West Asia. Daniele Pagani for Vion. All right, let's now go to our correspondent, Daniele Pagani, to get his perspective on this story. Daniele, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, my first question to you with regards to this, uh, you know, how surprised are we by this move, perhaps, you know, the U.S. designating some of these people as a uh, uh, global terrorist, but yet they appear on a television just like uh, regular stars, if you'd like to call it. I mean, how surprising is that? Does it perhaps give us an indication that the Saudis don't really care about this designation at all. Well, to those who are familiar with the topic, this is not surprising at all. This is a game that Saudi Arabia has been playing for a long time. What is surprising is that the United States Department of State, today led by one person who made the 
the war on terror, one of the pillars of his narrative, is still endorsing Saudi Arabia and still considering that Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia is their main ally in the region. Saudi Arabia, when it's hosting, when it's proven to host people directly linked with Al-Qaeda, we are talking about Al-Qaeda, the same organization which attacked the World Trade Center in the United States, which is what started the enormous war on terror of the United States, one of the largest terror attacks in history, the same organization, these people hosted by the Saudi and hosted on Saudi television have direct links with Al-Qaeda and the Arabic Peninsula. One of them was even Osama bin Laden's spiritual advisor. So what surprises me is how is it possible that the United States are accepting all these and vowing and saying continuously that the major problem regarding terrorism is Iran in West Asia, which Are, sounds to me a little bit of a contradiction, Archie. Right, well, you know, just to break it down, make it simpler, what exactly d does it mean when the U.S. designates someone on that global terror, global terror, uh, global terror list? Well, he is, uh, well, he becomes immediately objective of the, the military of the United States. He loses uh, territoriality, the United States can consider actions in order to extradite, in order to pull out these people from each and every country if they know exactly where they are and if they previously informed the government. So basically the United States uh, sort of, I mean, are looking for these people to eliminate them or jail them for life, but uh, they are sitting in the living room of their most powerful ally in uh, Saudi Arabia. Uh, obviously, when you are a United States global designated terrorist, you cannot possess any property in the United States. All your possible funds and the funds of your possible investment, even if you are a minority, uh, if you own the minority of a certain investment, are frozen completely by the Department of State. And no one is allowed to trade with you or with any organization that you represent. Daniel, I want to bring up an interesting uh, political question with regard to the U.S. administration, specifically on the story. Uh, the Trump administration earlier on banned several people from Muslim-majority countries. Saudi Arabia was not on that list, surprisingly. And then, you know, we see things like this. I mean, how, what do we make of that? Uh, perhaps is the U.S. Uh, a little bit more lenient when it comes to Saudi Arabia compared to some of the other uh, countries when it's fighting terror? Yes, absolutely, yes. And one of the several reasons is obviously oil. The other reason is that Saudi Arabia is playing a very clever game. So they are hosting a lot of people, very rich individuals, so Wahhabi individuals. Wahhabi is an extreme interpretation of Islam, a very hard-line interpretation of the Islamic religion. And it is a religion of state in the Saudi Arabia. So Saudis are hosting very influential and very rich clerics and businessmen believing in Wahhabism. So they are directly connected and they are directly funding all the Sunni uh, several uh, terror groups uh, or jihadi groups active all over the world. So this provides uh, to the Saudis also access to this world and the United States do know that in order to find out where these terror outfits are, they need uh, the intelligence that only the Saudi government can provide. So this is the very clever game of the Saudis. On the one hand, they uh, are presenting themselves as an ally of the United States, providing them with intelligence, uh, and this is happening. I mean, the United States are fighting alongside the Saudi in Yemen. And on the other hand, they keep hosting uh, individuals connected to Al-Qaeda, individuals connected to terrorist organization and individuals who are directly funding with millions of US dollars the several terror outfits fighting in West Asia. All right, Daniel Pagani getting us the very latest on this story. Daniel, thank you so much for those updates.